Hello and welcome to Peak Flicks. My name is Mr. Lepore and I'll be working alongside you all throughout the summer on a variety of math skills. Each day we'll be working on a small fluency component and right after that we'll take a look at a variety of different topics throughout the fourth grade math curriculum that we think will be beneficial to you to sharpen up on in order to prepare for everything that's to come. In addition, we're going to make sure to remind you that every day you need to make sure that your top right circle in our reflex math program is fully green inside and out. All right, let's start off with some fluency like we do for all of our lessons here together. So last time we met, we went over our twos times table and this time we're going to go over our threes times table. This is just a fun little quick activity to sharpen up on our multiplication facts. And again, make sure that you are heading to reflex at the end of all of our work today until you are fully green. So let's start thinking about our threes. I'll give you guys a second or two to try to answer it before I go ahead and give the answer out loud. Two times three is six. Five times three is 15. Three times four is 12. Three times six is 18. One times three is three. Three times three is nine. Three times 10 is 30. Seven times three is 21. Nine times three is 27. And three times eight is 24. So good job there. Hopefully you guys got some answers before I went ahead and gave them to you. Again, when we're all done here, remember to log on to Reflex through Clever until you are fully green to continue your fluency work, which is super, super important. All right, everybody. For our second lesson, we're going to do a little follow-up from our first lesson, which dealt with place value. So let's take a look at our objectives for the day, and then we'll get ready to rock and roll. So Students will be able to recognize a digit represents 10 times the value of what it represents in the place to its right. How are you going to do this? Students will be able to recognize a digit represents 10 times the value of what it represents in the place to its right by using their knowledge of place of their place value chart and 10 times greater or 10 times as many. So this is just what we spoke about last time. Let's take a look at our place value chart and review this. So. Here in our place value chart, we have the ones, the tens, the hundreds, the thousands, ten thousands, hundred thousands, and millions. Remember, we don't have to re uh, worry too much about the billions place here as fourth graders. But we know that every time we go from the right to the left, it increases by 10 times. 10 times greater, 10 times more, or 10 times as many. So the tens place is 10 times greater than the place to its right and the thousands place is 10 times greater than one place to its right and the millions place is 10 times greater than one place to its right let's take a look at some of these questions and problems and get going so jacob saved two thousand dollar bills four hundred dollar bills and six ten dollar bills to buy a car the car costs 10 times as much as he has saved. How much does the car cost? So the first thing we're going to do here is what we've done before. We're going to go to our place value chart. Nice and easy to draw it up. And then we just got to remember to label it up. So I have the ones, the tens, the hundreds, the right th if we remember for the thousands. And now for ten thousands, I'm going to go with a t dash t h. All right, so I got the ones, the tens, the hundreds, the thousands, and the ten thousands. 
So when I take a look at this problem, I want to underline anything that could be important that deals with numbers and box any keywords to help me decide what I have to do. So I have $2,000 bills, $400 bills, and six $10 bills to buy the car. But here we go again. The car costs 10 times as much as he has saved. I want to circle the question so I know exactly what the answer. How much does the car cost? All right, so the first thing I want to do is properly put in all of the information that I have. So I'll start with the first thing, $2,000 bill. So I'll go to the thousands place, one, two. All right, hundreds place, 100, 200, 300, and 400. Lastly, I have six $10 bills, so I'll represent that in the tens place. One, two, three, four, five, and six. So, right now what I see is 2,000, comma, 400, and $60. I'm going to put a zero here as a placeholder in the one space because he has no $1 bill saved. So this is how much Jacob has saved. I used my place value chart to help me with that. $2,460. Now the car costs 10 times as much. So how can I figure out how that is? Well, we know that every place that's one away is 10 times greater. So in the thousands place, 10 times greater would be the 10 thousands. In the hundreds, 10 times greater would be the thousands. And in the 10, tens place, 10 times greater would be the hundreds. So what we're going to do is we're going to shift over every single option that we have. And we're going to create a number that's going to answer the question of how much does the car cost. So from the thousands place, 10 times greater is the ten thousands place and there i have one two ten thousands from the hundreds place i shift over to the thousands place because it's ten times greater and now i have one two three and four thousands and lastly i shift from the tens place to the hundreds place and now i got to represent my six tens now that they're ten times greater will be one, two, three, four, five, and lastly, six. So when I've done all that shifting, I kind of have myself a new number that I've made. So let's take a look at what that number is. Here I have two ten thousands, four thousands, I have six hundreds, and now I need a placeholder, right? Since the hundreds place is 10 times greater than the tens place, I have no more tens, and I still have no more one, no ones. So one, two, three, comma, this lets me know that the car is $24,600, which is 10 times more or 10 times greater than 2,460. We also know that we could do this problem using some multiplication. So if I clear my screen here, I will be able to still go back, underline my important numbers. I could still box my keywords that let me know that the car is still 10 times more than he has saved. And I know that I got to answer the question, how much does the car cost? So before we used the place value chart, which we did in our previous lesson, but we also showed you how to multiply. So if I have $2,000 bills, 
$400 bills and six $10 bills. I'm going to put my zero in the ones place again as a placeholder. I need to find out how much is 10 times more. Now, because I use my place value chart, I'm able to properly write out my number of how much Jacob saved. And now I could just multiply it by our magic number is 10. So let's take a look at this. Remember, zero times anything is zero. One, two, three, and four, right? So zero times zero, zero times six, zero times four, zero times two. It doesn't matter, right? Because the answer you will always get will be zero. So I'm going to cross this off because I'm done with it. And I'm going to put a place value holder in the ones place so I could start multiplying by my one in the tens place. We should also know that anything times one is that number itself. One times zero we know is zero. One times six gets us six. One times four gets us four. And one times two gets us two, right? So if we add it all up, which should be nice and simple, we got zero, we got zero, we got six, we got four, and we got two. One, two, three, comma, right? So I have zero representing in my ones and my tens. I have six hundreds. I have four thousands and two ten thousands. So I can go ahead and show that with the proper money symbol to label my answer the right way. And whether we use our place value chart or we multiply by 10, we can see that the answer both times is 24,600. The last thing you have to be able to do is to make sure that you write your answer in a complete sentence. So I would restate the question, the car costs $24,600. All right, so let's take a look at our second problem here on the day that deals with place value again. All right, so let's read through this problem together and let's make sure that we're ready to underline the key numbers, box all the key words, and I always like to circle my questions so I know exactly what I have to answer. So, last year the apple orchard experienced a drought and did not produce many apples. But this year the apple orchard produced 45,000 Granny Smith apples and 900 Red Delicious apples which is 10 times as many as last year. How many apples did the orchard produce last year? So I think there's a lot of words here and some stuff we have to understand first. So a drought is something that happens with the weather and there's a lack of rain or water that, allow, that does not allow crops such as apples and other fruits and vegetables to grow as well as they usually do. Okay, so that happened last year. This year, the apple orchard produced 45,000 Granny Smith apples and 900 Red Delicious apples. That is, here comes our magic number and phrase again, 10 times as many apples as last year. Circle my question, how many apples did the orchard produce last year? So. When I read through this carefully, I realize that with the drought that happened and the 10 times as many phrase that I see, that there were much more apples made this year than last year. This is important to know because we're going to have to almost work backwards now using our place value chart. Okay, so let's take a look at this. I get my place value chart nice and ready. I'm going to show you guys a new way that you could use your place value chart that may be a little bit easier for all of you guys. All right, so this way involves kind of just shifting the numbers that you properly place in, okay? So as I make my place value chart as usual, I have the ones, I have the tens, I have the hundreds, I have the thousands, TH to represent thousands. If we remember how to mark 10 thousands, I like to do T dash TH, and that represents 10 thousands. And what would come after the 10 thousands place? If I wanted to label it, it would be the 100 thousands place. So here I do H dash 
T H for the hundred thousands place. So I have the ones, the tens, the hundreds, the thousands, the ten thousands, and the hundred thousands. Based on the information I have here, I had 45,000 Granny Smith apples. 45,000. I would recommend that you write it how you say it. So when I say 40, I 45,000, I think of, I'm going to place it in in standard form this time, four ten thousands and five thousands. And I have 900 red delicious apples, right? 45,000 and 900. That is how many apples there were in total. One, two, three, comma. Now, since I have 45,900 apples in total, and this is 10 times as many as last year, that means that this number will be greater than last year's. So I'm going to write a little something here, the best that I can. T H I S. I'm going to abbreviate year by putting Y and R. So this is this year. Okay, that way I know that. All right, but I still need to find. I'll abbreviate this even more, L, Y. I always like to do this to help me save time, but I also know what they represent. So L, Y would be last year. I have to figure that out. So we know that every time you move forward, one place is 10 times greater than the place it is to the right. So the tens place is 10 times greater than the ones, the hundreds 10 times greater than the tens, the thousands 10 times greater than the hundreds, and the ten thousands 10 times greater than the thousands. So if this number is 10 times greater, that means this number will be 10 times less. So instead of moving forward and shifting our numbers forward like we did before in the previous problem, we're actually going to shift them backwards because last year, right, they only produced apples that were 10 times less than this number. So I'm just going to go boom, shift them back one place each. Right, and now I actually have four thousand five hundred and ninety, and I'll put my placeholder right here in the ones place. Wow, I'm going to circle my answer. I like to do that after I work pretty hard on things. And lastly, as always, you'll have to write in a complete sentence. The orchard produced 4,590 apples last year. Also, make sure that you're getting onto your Reflex Math account that you could log in through Clever every single day when we're done with our math work here. You'll know you're done when the top right corner of your screen shows that your circle is fully green. Enjoy.